Look what I've got my hands on. God, that's heavy. And if you like my videos, I'm sure you will love my weekly retro gaming podcast. Download it every single Friday from theretrohour.com. Hey guys, Dan here with a admittedly long overdue new video. I know my channel has been a bit of a waste ground for like the last what month or so. To be fair, in my defence, I have got a pretty valid excuse this time as... If you can see it there, I did get married about four weeks ago. Now, I know lots of you did find out either through the uh, the Retro Hour podcast or my Facebook and Twitter, as I did get lots of lovely messages, lots of your best wishes uh, on social media. So really appreciate that, guys. Honestly, that meant a lot to us. And uh, after the wedding, I went on my honeymoon for uh, about three and a half weeks, a trip to Nice in the south of France, where it was about 27 degrees on the beach. It was lovely. And then we did a week in Reykjavik in Iceland, where it was about minus two or minus four, I think, in the evening some nights. So a little bit of a contrast there. But just to put all of your fears at bay, I've had lots of people saying this to me, my new wife's not going to make me get rid of all my computers and consoles. In fact, between me and you, I've actually got my hands on another machine. Now this was, uh, believe it or not, Quite a unique wedding present. Now, at my wedding, I did say to all my guests, look, you don't have to get me anything. We've already got a toaster and a washing machine. You know, what more could I possibly want? And then Ravi, who I host my Retro Hour podcast with every Friday, check it out if you haven't already, and Marvin Drugsma. Marvin is the man to go to if you ever need any Commodore or Amiga accessories or machines. You'll find him on like Facebook, Ami Bay, eBay, all the usual sites. Top guy. And they actually clubbed together and got me a Commodore Amiga 3000. What a beauty. Now, I've always kind of wanted to get my hands on an Amiga 3000 since I was probably about, what, about eight years old when I first saw one of these in a magazine. And a lot of people do regard the Amiga 3000 as the best designed Amiga machine ever, even more so than the original Amiga 1000, many people think. Now, I've got an Amiga 4000, you may have seen that on my channel before, which is kind of my uh, what, daily driver Amiga, if you like, but there is something quite special about the A3000. Not only has it got this quite unique design, you know, it looks a bit like a, a nice high-end early 90s workstation, but it was the first 32-bit Amiga. Now, it came with an O30 processor at 25 megahertz, also got stuff like, you know, a high-density floppy disk drive in there as well. It was the first machine with the enhanced chipset and Kickstart 2.0. So this really was the first machine that pushed the Amiga range ahead of the original OCS machines. And they were very expensive back in the day. But they do have some really nice design decisions. Even though I love my Amiga 4000, even the guys that worked at Commodore back in the day will admit that the A3000 was a superior design. They cut less corners, it came with stuff like a you know, SCSI interface built in here as well, and it is all round just a really, really cool machine, so really pleased to finally got my hands on one of these. It does weigh a bit of a ton holding it like this, I must admit, so I'm going to put it down in a minute. But there is some stuff that I do want to do to my A3000. Now, I was lucky enough to get this machine two days before I went away on my honeymoon. So that did mean I could do a little bit of planning. So I jumped onto Amibay, eBay, the Facebook groups, and actually bought a few upgrades for this machine that I knew would be waiting for me when I got back from my trip. So inside here, I mean, in a minute, I'm gonna crack the hood of the A3000 and show you a quick look at the internals. I've already got a graphics card that I fitted in here this morning, which is a Picasso 2. That's a 24-bit graphics card, means that I can run some really nice high-resolution screen modes, and because, the Amiga 3000 actually has a built-in scan doubler. That means I can run the Amiga's native video straight through it without you know, needing any extra upgrades, which is really nice. And as you can see, this machine is quite yellowed. So I'm gonna do some retro brighting to it and it is missing the floppy disk drive eject button. Now, unfortunately, the design of the floppy eject button I think was actually custom to the Amiga 3000. So it does mean that they are a really hard part to locate. But I have checked out a few guys on uh, websites that actually do 3D replacement parts. So they actually print out, you know, 3D print a replacement floppy disk drive eject button. You just need to kind of paint it to the correct color. So I'm gonna hopefully get my hands on one of those when I can track down one that is a good fit for it. And also the, uh, you can't really tell from this video yet, but the power and hard disk LED lights on the front don't work here. Now inside it is actually quite a simplistic board, so maybe I can do a bit of a rewiring and get that working again, or maybe get a replacement part for that. If anyone has any suggestions, I'd really appreciate that, as I do want to get this A3000 into really nice working order and kind of restore it to like its original state again. Now I did mention I got the Picasso board in there already. Um, I did get a couple of other upgrades as well. For example, to get it online, I've got this, which is a plip box. 
Now I've got a Zorro uh, Ethernet interface for my Amiga 4000, but I've kind of wanted to get my hands on one of these for a while. All you do is you plug it into the parallel port of the Amiga, and it gives you you know a higher speed than you get from serial and an Ethernet adapter on the back here. This is based on an Arduino machine, and it just needs a little you know power supply plugging in. And the reason I got you know this solution is because it also means I can use it on my Amiga 500 and my CD TV as well. So it's a good way to get um, you know my older Amiga machines online really easily rather than going down the expensive um, Ethernet Zorro card route, which I may do at some point for my A3000, but for now, you know, this would be quite cool to try out. And I also got my uh, my GoTech drive here as well for it. As I haven't decided yet, if I can't get a replacement floppy disk drive button, I might just take the drive out and put a GoTech in. Haven't quite decided yet, but I'd like it to look like the original, you know, design of the A3000 as much as possible. If I just put the machine down here for a second, I've also got my hands on this uh, switch box here. Now, a guy on Amibase sells these. I think his name is uh, Pavlo. Sorry if I got your name wrong. I'll put it here if I did. But he actually sells these really cool little switch boxes because my Amiga 3000 doesn't have a keyboard with it. And that is actually a really expensive part to find. I mean, they're often about 150 quid to get a good condition Amiga 3000 keyboard. But I do have the keyboard for my A4000. So what this box allows me to do is, is actually wired up all of the correct plugs on the end. This big spaghetti of cables here. But essentially, you plug in the, in the back here these little extension cables and I can put the keyboard and mouse um, video connector and audio from my Amiga 4000 into here, my Amiga 3000 into here and then I can literally just switch between the machines. So I can use all the uh, peripherals that I use on my A4000 or my Amiga 3000 just by clicking this switch over which is really cool and a lot easier than having to reach around the back and unplug them every time I want to swap machines. So this is a really cool, very tidy solution. So if you have got more than one Amiga and you want to share keyboard, mice, all that kind of thing between them, really good way of doing it. So I'm going to show you the Amiga, 4, uh, Amiga 3000 up and running in just a moment. Before that I thought we'd do a little close up and I'll show you a couple of the upgrades I fitted to the machine already. And here we have my beautiful Amiga 3000 on the desk in my man den here. Gives you a little bit of a closer look at this lovely design. Obviously it will look a lot nicer when I get the replacement parts and get it retro brighted back to its original colour. But actually opening the Amiga 3000 is really simple. All you got to do is undo two screws either side, one at the back, and then the whole front and top of the unit actually is all one piece and it just slides away. So that is actually really clean. There are no kind of like fiddly cables to undo or anything like that, giving you really easy access to the internals of the Amiga 3000. And you can actually spot a few of the upgrades I've done already that I'll talk you through in just a second. But I mean, looking around here, we've got the um, original high density three and a half inch floppy disk drive here, missing that custom eject button that I do need to get a replacement for. As I mentioned, the LEDs are broken on this machine. As you can see, the circuit board is actually snapped there and that one of the LEDs is missing. It's come away from the pins here. But the thing is actually tracking down these dual package LEDs is quite rare these days. I haven't found any on eBay. So maybe I can actually maybe get just two simple LEDs and repair this board or it's not a very complicated diagram really. I could, I'm sure I can do a, a new circuit for, for this. But if you've got any suggestions, maybe you've got one spare or you know a replacement that I could put in here, definitely let me know. Uh, we've also got the power supply at the back here where a little stick comes from the front of the machine just pushes in this key. Simple design, but it works. And this is one of the upgrades I've done already. I've actually replaced the original hard disk that was an 80 megabyte SCSI drive uh, dating from around 1991 I think that was in here. It was still working kind of but it had the um, you know the click of death and also it had quite a few errors on the drive so I thought you know obviously SCSI drives are quite hard to get hold of these days. What I'd do is just get one of these from Amiga Kit. Now if you look here I've actually got it on a few risers um, in the original placeholder that the hard disk was and this is a SCSI to micro SD adapter so that means Instead of using old SCSI hard disks, I can just use a modern micro SD card in here. So I've got this SanDisk 16 gigabyte card that I prepared in WinUAE, and then I just transplanted that into the A3000, booted up first time and works really well. I do like using traditional hard disks where I can. So I do quite like the noise of them chugging away inside the case. There is something quite nostalgic about that, but you know, because SCSI is quite hard to get new high capacity modern drives, this was a really simple solution, I thought I'd just go with that. And also, I've got the Picasso 2 graphics card in there as well. Hard to get all that in shock because it's such a massive card. But it actually takes up the um, video and bottom Zorro slot on my A3000. As you can see, I think that daughterboard is actually the same as the A4000. So I've got 
a couple of spare slots here. I could put stuff like USB and Ethernet in there if I want to. Maybe I will at some point, but for now, having the Picasso in there is pretty good. And if you look at the back of the machine, there are some quite interesting ports on the Amiga 3000. As I said, it's got a built-in SCSI interface. You can put an external drive in there. I'm thinking maybe something like a, a CD-ROM drive will be quite useful, or maybe even something like wacky, like a, a tape streamer for doing backups, you know. That might be quite fun. I've also got a gender changer in my serial port here, as before I got my hands on the uh, plip box. I've been using my Raspberry Pi to get this machine online to do some downloads to it. Floppy disk drive, parallel, or standard Amiga ports. This bit's quite interesting here. We have a 15 kilohertz standard Amiga RGB output, but also next to it, that is a standard VGA adapter. Now, the reason this is here is because the Amiga 3000 is the only Amiga that has a built in scan doubler. So that means, as you can see, there's a switch there for enable disable you can actually output the Amiga's native video scan doubled to 31 kilohertz. And that means you can look at all the Amiga screen modes using a standard VGA monitor, which is really useful. And what it means is with my Picasso 2 card in there, I can take the output from the Amiga and then just run that into the Picasso card another cable here into my 19-inch um, CRT monitor, and I can look at all the Amiga screen modes, demos, games, and the high-resolution Picasso 2 screen modes all through one cable. No switching inputs, nothing like that, no messing around really, so the A3000 is really well designed for that, so that's a really simple way just to get everything running nicely on one monitor. Now, as I said, I've only got one expansion in here really at the moment in the Zorro slots. I haven't quite decided what I'm gonna do with my A3000 yet. I don't want this to be essentially a mirror of my Amiga 4000. So I haven't put Kickstart um, 3.9 and Workbench 3.9 on here. It's got 3.1 ROM built into it, but I've actually kind of been inspired by Steve Jones's video quite a bit. I love his Amiga 3000 video. So I've gone with Classic Workbench, Workbench 3.1 at the moment, and I would like to maybe get some more kind of obscure stuff going on here. Like I said, maybe a SCSI tape streamer, maybe something like a video toaster. I've even seen some cards that give you um, the capability to do X11 home automation using the Amiga. So I want to use this machine for something different to my Amiga 4000. Otherwise, there's no point in having it really. So if you've got any suggestions on maybe kind of more interesting add-ons that I can get for this machine or stuff I could use it for, I'd definitely appreciate a comment as I will do some future videos on my A3000. So there you go. As you can see, I've got some pretty big plans for my Amiga 3000. I will keep you updated with any new bits I get for it. And uh, you know, as we get this more towards its original nice looking state when I get everything kind of fixed and working on it. If you can offer any help with stuff like the LEDs and the floppy drive uh, eject button, please leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. I really want to restore this machine and get it into a lovely working order. Uh, but again, just thank you Ravi and Marvin. Great to have my hands on an Amiga 3000 at long last. And if you do like the Amiga, I do have lots of other videos on other Amiga models on my channel. So please do click the subscribe button, give this a thumbs up. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.